as Strange New Worlds announces season four is now confirmed, Lower Deck says season five is the end. And Todd Stashwick, he'd really like you to come play Dungeons and Dragons with he and his friends. This is the Star Trek Void, volume 38, where I try to fill the gaps between episodes with a little news, a little information, and hopefully a little entertainment. And as per usual, we are starting this day out with some happy birthdays. And first off, we are wishing a very happy birthday to William Sadler. This one is by TrekMovie.com, as are uh, quite a few of them, actually. Happy birthday to William Sadler, who played Luther Sloan, a Section 31 operative, in three episodes of Star Trek Deep Space Nine. And he is a familiar face. Remember in last video, I said one of my guilty pleasures is Roswell. Well, that includes the original, and uh, he played the sheriff in that one, Sheriff Valenti. So, happy birthday, William. And a very happy birthday to Bill Irwin, also a TrekMovie.com share. Happy birthday to actor, clown, and comedian Bill Irwin, who played Sakal in Star Trek Discovery. Star Trek and Mr. Noodle, our hashtag there. And he did a fantastic job at the end of season three. I really enjoyed him. So yeah, very happy birthday, Bill. And a happy birthday to one of our Lower Decks voices. Uh, happy birthday to Haley Joel Osment, who joined the Star Trek franchise in 2020 for the first time, voicing Lieutenant O'Connor, aspirer to and then reluctant achiever of spiritual ascension in the Star Trek Lower Decks episode, Moist Vessel. I see dead people. And I really hope we get an answer to that whole koala question, but that's for a later video. And our final birthday is a remembrance. This one is for Charles Napier. Remembering Charles Napier on his birthday who played Adam in the original Star Trek episode, The Way to Eden, in 1969, and then returned to Star Trek in 1995 as Lieutenant General Rex Dennings in Star Trek DS9's Little Green Men. Oh, and he also was in Roswell. <laughs> the original series so I, I really i did not know believe it or not I, I know a little bit about star trek i didn't realize that it was the same fella um very cool information part of the reason i love doing this channel is i always learn a little as well so very sad that he has gone but so excited that he was part of the star trek family and now todd stashwick would really like you to join him on a game of DD with um, a couple of familiar faces now, I shared this with you last week, and it was so popular that one seat has become two. Another seat is open for bidding. The bidding does end on Monday. And so, if you want to be part of this, you better get in on it quick. Uh, here it just says, play Dungeons & Dragons with Todd Stashwick and friends via live stream on April 20th. That's not too far from now. And you can see the names there. You could be the sixth chair at that table, the seventh chair at that table, I should say. Get your bid in if you'd like to join these folks on a game because time is running down. You can see here, we're at two days, four hours, 20 minutes as of the recording. By the time I post this, it'll probably be a straight up two days. So get there quick if you do want to be a part of it. And of course, yes, you will be able to find that link down below. And now for some surprising news, at least to me, um, not the first part. Star Trek Strange New Worlds renewed for season four. Not shocking at all. Lower Decks to conclude with season five. That surprised me. Now, this article does start with the Strange New Worlds announcement and at the end has the Lower Decks talk and it goes over what Lower Decks was about, how it was about uh, these junior crewmen and what they did. And now they helped a starship run while having some wacky adventures of their own. Uh, in the second paragraph here, I'm going to read with you here. Given its premise, concluding Lower Decks makes sense considering the main four characters all received promotions in season four. But in a message to fans, Kurtzman and executive producer and showrunner Mike McCone left the turbo lift doors open for continuing the character stories following their time at the bottom of the Starfleet pecking order. We remain hopeful that even beyond season five, Mariner, Boimler, Tendi, Rutherford, and the whole Cerritos crew will live on with new adventures. They said, while five seasons of any series these days seems like a miracle, it's no exaggeration to say that every second we've spent making this show has been a dream come true. But you know, we Trekkies, we don't give up so easily. Of course, there's already a petition to try and continue the series. And it's up to 2,774 signatures with a goal of 5,000, which doesn't seem like the hugest goal in my opinion. We should be able to reach that without too much trouble. And yes, of course, you will find that link below as well. Now, with that Strange New World announcement and the continuation, uh, we did get a little something from Season 3, which is that, yes, we will have Scotty. This this was 
have been a rumor for a long time. This is just confirmation that Scotty will show up in season three of Strange New Worlds. We're very much looking forward to it. Now, of course, we did get to meet our newest Scotty at the very, very end of last season. Rather, he was going to continue on is in the next season. That kind of was up for question. We thought that he might appear because obviously he's there. He's going to be part of the rescue mission or whatever the heck happens at the beginning of season three. But would he continue with the crew as they moved along through the story? And it looks like he might. Montgomery Scott, Star Trek's most fabled engineer, has returned to the franchise. Martin Quinn stepped into the engineer's shoes, debuting in Star Trek Strange New World Season 2 finale, Hegemony, which I still can't pronounce properly, I don't know. Uh, while we figured he'd be back for more, Quinn has officially confirmed to BBC Scotland that Scotty is on board for Strange New Worlds Season 3, and for the first time in Trek's 60-year history, Quinn is the first genuine Scott in the role. Which has always been sort of a point of contention. I mean, uh, people did a good job doing the Scott accent and bringing Scotty to life for us, so it's not huge complaints. But it'd be really nice to actually have a Scott playing Scotty. And in Discovery News, we have this fantastic graph. What does this graph mean, Katie, you might be asking? Well, it means that Paramount's Star Trek Discovery is doing very, very well in its premiering week. This one is shared by Trek Central. Star Trek Discovery warps into the top spot of the T-Vision Power Score list, an industry service measuring 1,000 plus apps for viewing engagement and more, kicking off its final season in style. Via broadcasting and cable source, we've got the link below. Yes, I will try to include that as well. But yeah, you can see we've got tons of shows that are doing well. Uh, Palm Royal, Sugar, X-Men, Three Body Problem. I still need to watch that one. Uh, Files of the Unexplained. Just, you know, everything. But at the very top, we have Star Trek Discovery. Bring it in. Really well done. Congratulations to everyone who has worked on that fifth season. You deserve this recognition. And I, for one, am really glad that they started off strong. I have loved Discovery since the first episode, since uh, she, she went rogue and started a war and escaped a, a uh, holding cell through space. That was all fantastic. I've loved Michael Burnham from the beginning. I've enjoyed the concept of this starship that was able to go from one place to another in a blink of an eye. Even the rogue scenarios that were brought up by the plot line of that first season. I enjoyed everything. Take me to the mirror universe. Uh, show me that a traitor can actually be a good guy and the good guy can actually be the traitor. It was all fun. I really enjoyed it. I still had some issues with the Klingons, but I enjoyed the plot and the story so much. I, I kind of washed over that without too much trouble. And Discovery has proven to bring in a great story every season, become more and more interesting as they go along. So I like Discovery. All y'all want to be upset about it, but... I enjoy it, and I enjoy this as well. If you want to go on an adventure with Michael Burnham yourself, then well, maybe this is the way to do it. This is shared by the Scorch 1701. Uh, they will take two. It, you can see it's the USS Discovery Electronic Starship. It's a collector's edition's numbered for us. Display stand is included according to this. And it's a, let's read some of the features here. Dual detachable light up engines. Spinning spore drive action, that would be a must, obviously. Authentic starship sounds, black alert, spore jump, phasers, and photon torpedoes. And it says that it is a highly detailed 20-inch replica. If you look at the little square down here, it also says it has spring action shuttle bay doors. Well, it's not just a model, it's a toy. And um, some of us like our toys for our shows. <laughs> now, as we have enjoyed this first three episodes of Discovery. I have to say, I really enjoyed Fred. I'm really sorry that he was, you know, barely a scene's worth of entertainment, but I enjoyed Fred. I don't know why they had to kill him off so quick. I just wanted to point this out because I have a couple of favorite moments that I want to share real quick, and I'd like to hear what yours were. Um, beyond the fact that they had two starships come down and stop a sand avalanche and Saru getting engaged, I also enjoyed the opportunity to see Saru running through a forest again. One final time, Maybe we'll see it again, but I always enjoy that effect. It was really cool. The eyeball drones were a nice touch. Enjoyed those as well. And in this last episode, well, I really am kind of on the fence about our new commander. He is short with the crew, seems to be listening, but not quite understanding how to connect and be, you know, have a better interpersonal relationship with his crew. 
Now, of course, Tilly is trying to help him with that issue. We'll have to see if he kind of grows as the season goes along. But those are the points I've enjoyed so far the most, I think, in these first three episodes. And one of the bigger pieces of news, if not slightly confusing, is this article. Uh, Paramount officially adds Star Trek origin story film to the 2025 release slate. Now, it's not necessarily confusing that they would want to release a prequel movie. We've kind of been talking about that for uh, about a month now or so. But what's really weird is that there's really zero information about it. And it's supposed to be an origin story. Is it an origin story of Starfleet? Because, um... We got that. It's a little series called Enterprise, lasted four seasons. We all really want to bring back Trip. You know, that one. So it's a little bit difficult to be excited about an announcement that kind of tells us nothing more than we already knew, except for we've got this. Officially, it's an untitled Star Trek origin story uh, directed by Toby Haynes, written by Seth Graham Smith, and produced by J.J. Abrams. Again, not really lots of new information there, stuff we've already been talking about for a while. There's literally nothing else. The film still has no official cast or character list yet. So as of today, there is no clear indication if anyone from previous Star Trek adventures, Kelvin Timeline or otherwise, will be part of the project. Now, if I were to hope for anything, I would hope that it would be the continuation of the story of the Enterprise NX. I know that is a pipe dream, and they would still have to bring back Trip. <laughs> but, um, yeah, zero information on an announcement that really isn't much of an announcement. Not real helpful, guys. Hopefully, we will have more information later on. But for now, that's everything I have catching us up for the rest of this week. Lots of birthdays, a little bit of information, some sad information, and at least two ways we can get involved, either by uh, signing that petition to try and get Lower Decks extended, or be a part of a game with a lot of tricky people trying to go through and uh, uh, avoid dungeons and dragons, I guess. Well, if you would like more information as I find it out, please do make sure you subscribe to this channel. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give us a like. And always, when I ask questions, I really am asking, please comment below if you have anything you'd like to add. Even to tell me why I'm so wrong about liking Discovery, because I really do like Discovery. <laughs> Thanks, as always, to my Patreons and members. You guys rock and have helped me out every step of the way. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for all of you who have come and viewed. I do appreciate it. every view does count. This is a tiny channel. So, so you guys are essential to me keeping this going. I do appreciate your interest as well. And if you are interested in more Star Trek information and need to catch up more on what's been going on, please do check out any of my other videos here. You'll find some Outlander there as well. So if you like that show, I do a similar style for updates in the Outlander universe. And if you do, you know what? I'll see you there. Mm -hmm.